Hi, everybody. I am Julie Bond Blank. This is my new book called Innocent Lives. Um, it has a not for resale up there only because it's my proof copy. If you order a copy, it will not be on there. I promise. It's just in time for the holidays. It retails at $15.99, although there have been some sales going on. And today I wanted to read to you the prologue of the book, just in case you were curious about what all the fuss is about. They were no longer children and they were finally allowed real fun. Thursday at 7 p.m., Sienna and Jasmine's dads, Jimmy and Ken still wiped off the occasional sweat drop from their foreheads. And Mari, Jasmine's mom, complained about her flushed cheeks as she gathered her hair into a ponytail. One of those days, whew, she grabbed a park brochure off the picnic table to fan herself. You should get going, she waved at the girls. Back before dark, please. The parents sat in the cooler side of the trees by a roaring mountain river where they drank iced tea, an occasional beer, and talked adult talk, whatever that meant. After playing along the water's edge for a while and collecting some unique looking rocks that they stowed away in their tent, the girls decided to take their promised walk and get ice cream cones. They met with some resistance from both their mothers who eyed the, who eyed the lowering sun. The girls specialized in waiting too long on a regular basis. We'll be back in less than half an hour, Sienna promised. Jasmine agreed, vigorously nodding. Cherry chocolate ice cream called her name. Gathering and pocketing their change with an extra five thrown in on the sly from Sienna's dad, they waved and started down the road. Stay together, called Mari. The two girls, hearing her loud and clear, waved harder. They think we're babies. Jasmine tucked her long blonde hair behind her ear and Sienna rolled her eyes. They act like we're never coming back. Well... I suppose Sasquatch could get us. Jasmine laughed. Last night around the fire, Sienna's brother Kai had boasted that one karate chop would flatten the furry beast. The girl snickered. Now hilarity beckoned while imagining Sasquatch grabbing them and stashing them away in a cave somewhere. What do you think he looks like for real? Jasmine reached down to tighten her shoelace. Maybe he would roll us up like a croc does before they eat you. Hmm. Maybe he would be polite and let us give him a shave, Sienna nodded firmly. Thinking about his extreme hair issue elicited a new set of giggles from both of them. Do you think he has nipples for real? The postcards at the store with his picture all have nipples on them. Sienna batted her on the arm. You, you, Jazz, who cares about that? Jasmine shut up about nipples, and she talked about the new cute boy at school instead. Chad had wavy dark hair and extremely bright blue eyes. He must have colored contacts. Sienna constantly admired his arm muscles. Jasmine was so busy fighting stomach butterflies that she forgot to say anything when he was in the same room. She only blushed, and Sienna teased her about it endlessly afterward. At the general store, they giggled when they passed the Sasquatch postcards, and they headed to the soda case. Then finally, the ice cream counter. With their cones and cans carefully balanced in one hand, in hand, they headed toward the door. I don't want to go back yet, Sienna, Sienna whined. It's boring. All they do is talk, blah, blah, blah. Well, let's go the long ways. Jasmine's cell phone was in her back pocket. She should text her mom if they were going to be more than a half an hour. But maybe she should finish her ice cream and wash the sticky off her hands first. Her phone jingled, so they closed the store door behind them, and they paused on the wooden deck in front of the store. She passed her cone and soda can to Sienna. What flavor did you get? Mom, on the phone. Jasmine rolled her eyes, wiping her other hand on her jeans. Cherry chocolate, of course. Oh, okay. The screen flashed back with a second message. How about the dairy-free sorbet next time? Jasmine smiled and she tucked the phone away. Her ice cream cone would start a major drip session at any time and Sienna looked a bit impatient trying to hold everything. Got it, Jasmine nodded after Sienna handed her items back. We really should go the long ways back. They won't even know.
Okay, Sienna shrugged. They headed along the road with the forest at their right and the river at their left. Within minutes, they saw a road leading up into the woods and they headed up the mountain instead. Jasmine wanted pics looking down at the river. Why is the road so bumpy? Jasmine tripped on a large rock and almost dropped her ice cream. Geez, it's a logging trail, doofus. Only big trucks come up here to get trees to build houses and stuff. Don't you remember when we hiked it a couple of years ago? It did seem familiar. The woods darkened while Jasmine continued to walk up, 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 eating her ice cream as she went. It dripped on her hand. She licked at the sweetness. The tall trees mesmerized. Sometimes on their family exploration trip, she saw huge mushrooms. Once, a hole in the tree trunk that she'd climbed into. Her daddy, Ken, had snapped a photo. Maybe you should be an environmental mental scientist, he said, since you love the outside. He encouraged her, but as she was climbing out of the tree trunk, she grabbed the plant for support and immediately squawked. Maybe I shouldn't. I just stuck my whole arm in a patch of nettles. Oops. Finally, they reached a point where they could look down on the river if they veered off road slightly and out onto a cliff made of solid rock. Pretty. Sienna saw another cliff made of rocks across the river. Do you think there's an echo? She started howling like a wolf. Sounds rebounded back. Jasmine giggled. She finished her cone and joined in. They laughed and howled and howled and laughed some more. Jasmine pictured a pack of wolves on the other side howling back at them but unable to reach them. Jasmine's phone dinged. Dang, we better get back, it's almost dark. And I didn't even take pics, wait a sec. Both girls paused as Jasmine took some shots of the river, woods, one of Sienna sticking her tongue out. Then they took a selfie together, grinning like silly clowns. Her phone's camera flashed. Howling again, they headed back down the logging road towards camp, crushing their soda cans. Halfway down, they tossed the evidence, but instantly, Sienna felt bad. What if the animals tried to eat them? Hmm. She tried to pick them, she picked them up and tucked them into her shirt pocket. Her half-eaten ice cream started to slide off its cone. Jasmine texted her mom, almost back. They talked about school and chat some more, and they ragged on the teachers. Mrs. Boss is cool, but I hate Mr. G. Jasmine grinned. What's his real name anyway? I don't know, Sienna shrugged. It's probably on the class schedule, but who keeps those? He just has Mr. G on the board. Maybe he has a stupid last name. Maybe, or maybe it's too long to spell. Hey, you won't be there this year. What am I gonna do without you? Jasmine pouted. Sienna, who was moving on to high school, grinned again. You're a goofball. What do you wanna do tomorrow? Kai wants to fish, but that's boring. Dad said maybe we should row a boat, rent a boat and row one. A boat would be fun. Jasmine picked up a stick and broke it in half. But I really just want to know how many s'mores I get tonight. The girls walked down the hill, sometimes sliding a bit on the incline and once with Sienna even landing on her butt. Laughter rang through the woods. They never heard the quiet footsteps following in their wake. That is the prologue to Innocent Lives by Julie Von Blank. You can buy the book at any major books, at bookstore. Um, ebook will also be coming out soon. Thanks for listening.